You paying attention? Don't pass that on me. There's still a lot for you to absorb. Experiment number one, Willowbrook Experiments. From the years 1956 to 1970, an experimental study was conducted at Willowbrook State School, which was located in Staten Island, New York. The purpose of the facility was to house mentally handicapped children who had been abandoned by their families and foster care agencies. Throughout the first 10 years of the school's operation, hepatitis outbreaks were frequent. This resulted in controversial medical studies that were carried out by Saul Krugman and Robert McCollum. The series of shocking experiments involved injecting the mentally disabled children with experimental drugs that were aimed to cure hepatitis. As if this wasn't enough, the children who did not contract the disease naturally were infected with it by the administrators in order to carry on with the experiment. On one specific incident, Krugman had intentionally fed live hepatitis virus to 60 healthy children. As the virus took its course, he watched their skin and eyes turn yellow and their livers enlarge. Many began to vomit and refused to eat. Some became severely ill. Krugman argued that it was justifiable to infect mentally handicapped children because most of them would have contracted the virus anyway. Experiment number two, plutonium testing. During the 1940s, the United States led the Manhattan Project, which was a research and development pursuit of the world's first nuclear weapons. Radiation was known to be dangerous, but the detailed effects of radiation on human health were unknown at the time. In efforts to discover the effects of radiation on humans, the government sought out to carry experiments that would be tested on human subjects who were sick, poor, and powerless. From 1945 to 1947, 18 people were injected with plutonium by Manhattan Project doctors. The very first person to be experimented on was Eb Cade. Cade was involved in a traffic accident and was taken to Oak Ridge Hospital where he received his first injection of plutonium. He became known as HP-12, which stood for Human Product 12. In order to test the spreading of plutonium through Cade's body, 15 of his teeth were extracted and bone samples were taken. Cade died a few years later of heart failure, but it's unsure if the plutonium experiments played any role into his death. He was just one of 18 people that were experimented on, and although most of the patients didn't die from the effects of the plutonium injections, the government's secrecy and willingness to subject its own citizens to such experiments raised doubts and distrust from many. Experiment number three. Experimental Spinal Taps on Children In 1896, a pediatrician by the name of Arthur Wentworth had done an experimental spinal tap on a young girl and noticed that she cringed in pain during the procedure. A spinal tap, which is also known as a lumbar puncture, is a medical procedure in which a doctor inserts a needle into the patient's back to help diagnose illnesses such as meningitis. At the time, spinal taps were thought to be painless, but Wentworth, suspected it to be painful, although he was not totally convinced. As if injecting a huge ass needle into someone's spine isn't convincing enough, he decided to conduct an experiment with spinal taps to see if whether or not the procedure inflicted pain. He then went on to repeat the procedure on 29 other infants and toddlers and eventually came to the obvious conclusion that the procedure was painful but aided in diagnosing illnesses. He was met with controversy and mixed reviews from his colleagues, with some praising his findings, while others accused him of carrying out unethical human experimentation. Experiment number four, surgery to treat insanity. In 1907, Dr. Henry Cotton became head of an insane asylum in Trenton, New Jersey, which is now known as Trenton Psychiatric Hospital. Dr. Cotton strongly believed that localized injections in the human body is what caused insanity and mental illness in people. He and his team practiced surgical bacteriology in efforts to cure mental illness. He performed thousands of surgical operations on patients, often without their consent. Oftentimes, the teeth were pulled first, as it was suspected they were harboring infections. 
If this failed to cure the patients from their mental illness, he would then move on to the tonsils and sinuses and remove those. If there was still no sign of cure after these procedures, he would then progress to other organs such as the testicles, ovaries, gallbladder, stomach, spleen, cervix, and colon. Despite their mental illness, many patients recognize the dangers of undergoing surgery at the hands of a psychotic doctor, and oftentimes violently resisted as they were forced into the operating room. 49 patients had died from the surgical removal of their colons, and Dr. Cotton justified their deaths stating that they were already suffering from end-stage psychosis. He strongly believed in his methods so much that he extracted teeth from himself in order to avoid becoming mentally ill. An investigation later concluded that he exaggerated the results of the cure rates as well as the percentage of patients who died, and he eventually retired from the state hospital. Despite all of this, critics concluded that he was truly sincere in trying to cure his patients even though it was in a deranged and psychotic manner. Experiment number 5. Shock Therapy and LSD for Kids Psychiatrist Loretta Bender is known for creating the Bender Gestalt Test, which is a psychological test that assesses visual motor functioning, developmental disorders, and neurological impairments in children and adults alike. However, this is not the only thing she is known for. During her time at Bellevue Hospital, she administered daily shocks to 98 pediatric patients in attempts to cure them from what she called childhood schizophrenia. The children were exposed to the electroconvulsive therapy every day for an average total of 20 treatments. After every treatment, the test subjects completed the visual motor gestalt performance test and were noted to become more anxious after the treatments had ended. Bender had concluded that only a small amount of the children had relapsed after treatment. In addition to shock therapy, Bender also administered adult-sized doses of drugs like LSD and psilocybin which is a chemical found in hallucinogenic mushrooms. The children received these drugs for weeks at a time in efforts to find a cure for childhood schizophrenia. Although it has never been confirmed, there are allegations that Bender's experimental shock therapy and LSD treatments were secretly funded by the CIA. Experiment number six, measles vaccine. From 1990 to 1991, the Centers for Disease Control conducted experiments involving the measles vaccine. The doctors that worked for the CDC wanted to find out if immunity could be obtained by vaccinating children younger than a year old and which of the dosage strengths should be used. Thousands of babies were injected with the experimental drug in third world countries like Haiti. The government also tested it in the US for the first time in the city of Los Angeles. According to the CDC, more than 1,500 African American and Hispanic babies were injected with the drug due to those communities being hit hardest with the disease. Parents were informed that their children would receive one of two doses of the vaccine being studied, but the CDC admitted the fact that the drug was experimental and unlicensed. Researchers became concerned when data studies suggested an increased death rate amongst female infants in third world countries who received the stronger dose of the two. Although the CDC states there was no confirmed association between the experimental vaccine and the increased deaths, it was enough for the World Health Organization to say that high doses of the vaccine should no longer be considered for use in children. <laughs>